The Jeff Farazon cosplay? I'm good, thanks. I feel like I get the point of every character's kit but Sino's. Why does this kit even exist? <laughs> listen. Listen! Listen! Oh yeah, that is true, actually. Oh wait, someone, someone said... Finally had a use for Ella after a year? That's true, because she's so bad, they're never gonna d give a multiplier that's like, enemy's physical resistance increased by 80%. Right? Because they know no one, like, actually, yeah. So that is a thing that she's got going for her. She's too bad to warrant a gimp like that. Carries like Xiao and Farazan. Oh, sorry. Carries like Xiao and Freeze Ganyu have access to Farazan and Shenhai, respectively. Physical just lacks good supports in general. Okay, I mean, Freeze Ganyu is definitely not a hyper carry, but with the Xiao thing. Sure, but it's not like Farazan's release made Xiao significantly better, right? Like, yeah, if you get C6 Farazan. That can be a nice buff to a lot of Shao's teams. But if you don't have C6 Farazan, then really it's not a significant buff to Shao. And most people don't have C6 Farazan. Because she's only been on fucking Wanderer banners. And Shao players generally already have their fucking Animo carry and don't particularly want to get fucking Wanderer. Isn't Farazan at base already better than C4 Jean? Literally every character at base is already better than C4 Jean for Xiao. Like, C4 Jean is so fucking dog shit. Uh, I've talked about this before, but like... C4 Jean only ever really works against enemies that... Um... Against enemies that like... Don't get knocked back. That are immune immune to to, to to stagger and all that. Cause otherwise they'll never be inside your ult. Right? Like Gene C4 in most situations for Xiao just doesn't do that much. Cause yeah, because her circle is too small. And her ult pushes enemies outside of the circle. And once they're outside, if you try to stagger them back inside, they're gonna get hit by the ult effect and they will get staggered back outside. Like, you just, yeah, it just, it's just not gonna happen. Like, Gene C4 is just very not great. Yeah, in, in any case, like, without, without Ferris on C6, Xiao's teams just didn't really get much better. They became more focused on Xiao's personal damage, right? Because Ferris on is just a big, like, dedicated buffer, and she's decent enough that you can safely replace some sort of like off-field damage dealer like Fischl or, or Shangling with her and it's not going to be necessarily a downgrade but it's also not necessarily going to be an upgrade right with, if you do have c6 it definitely can be an upgrade or definitely will be an upgrade but without it it's just your your, your shout steam dps is not didn't go up by a significant amount from ferrazon's release favorite type of coffee i'm not really a coffee nerd um, I don't really like dark coffee. It just doesn't... I feel like it's... Dark coffee is generally a bit too bitter for me. Uh, I, I like a good medium roast. In terms of the bean, I'm not very difficult. Like, I can tell when it's really cheap coffee, but as long as it's not fucking really cheap coffee, I'm not really gonna be able to tell the difference. So I don't really mind. Every time someone asks me what bosses I like, I will say the exact same thing. There are two bosses in this game that are fucking amazing. And it is really stupid that their HP is so low that you don't actually get to experience the actual boss fights after you've reached AR like 12. And those are the Cryo and the Pyro Regis Vine. They are the best bosses in the game. I still remember the first time I, I saw a Cryo Regis Vine Cause I was in Mondstadt, you know, I was just, I, I just started playing the game. I saw that thing. I was like, well, that's scary. I went to attack it. I got fucking one shot. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try again. And I tried again and I tried again until I got it. Is it because they don't move? Okay. 
basically the way that they have like a stalling attacks is not random right they do have again right quote unquote stalling attacks but their stalling mechanics is an elemental shield that gets broken with a very clear condition and that regenerates on, at, with a very clear condition after a specific amount of time. There's no randomness involved in their stalling, which means that you can actually plan around it. And it rewards knowledge rather than rewarding luck, which is, it's an amazing design. And it also doesn't like completely remove half of your fucking game mechanics like the Winut does. Because when it's underground, you can't generate any energy. You can't, like, it's, ugh, it's cringe. And it actually has somewhat long DPS windows that let you actually play teams. The, the Regisvine event that we had in Dragonspine balls. was amazing. It really was. It was one of the best, like, combat events that we've had. I liked it a lot. But yeah, so if I, if I were to design, if I were to design one of these, Right? A fucking Vagabond or a, a Departed Warriors or whatever thing. It would be all three Regis Vines. I think the Electro Regis Vine is a little bit more cringe. The main thing that makes it cringe though isn't like its design. It's the auto-targeting system. Which I've shown before but I want to show it again because it always makes me laugh. Right? So Yuimiya's like special charge attack homes onto the base of it instead of the core. So it doesn't actually break the shield, but then on top of that... Her normal attack does as well. Every single character that has an, uh, uh, an auto-targeting mechanic will try to target the, like, root of the Regis Vine, even when the core is at a different place. Which is just gonna make things so cringe. It's not an it's not a Yoemia exclusive issue, but it's most noticeable on Yoemia because her attacks have no AOE. So if it's not targeting the core, uh, you're not gonna hit the core, <laughs> right? You those have multi wave content, mind. yeah, like this is Nilo Abyss. And those that come across the thing about Nilo Abysses is that inherently they allow for so much more team versatility, right? It's pretty easy to restrict Nilo in ways that make her feel a lot worse to play. And that make it so that you're gonna need to have some vertical investment or a really fucking strong second side to clear, right? Like in this abyss. But most of the ways that you can restrict Nilo are just generally the ways that Hoyo often uses to make their shit just not fun. And so because of that, when there's a Nilo abyss, it tends to be more fun. I really like Nilo abysses. Because you just get to be able to play so many different things. I'm fairly excited for it. I don't think it's going to be nearly as hard, right? I do think that, like, this might be a little rough um, for a bunch of teams. You do have a little bit of a, like, team building restriction. And that you really want to be able to put a Hydro unit here. And then you've got a single target second side. So you kind of also have an incentive to put Sing So on the second side. So that gives you less possible... Uh, hydro units here but really like it's a lot less restrictive and that's nice i like that a lot six waves of enemies i mean we have six waves right now on the current abyss uh, on 12-1 but one of the waves has, has three heralds with fucking huge elemental shields this is gonna be just that but easier i hope the hydro like a bit uh, helitro rogues don't spawn in places that are cringe and that they're somewhat easily groupable. Other than that, though, everything looks, like, fairly straightforward. No, I'll complain about this abyss simply because it has less annoying mobs. It's still just as tanky as any of the Sumeru abyss cycles. I mean, yeah, it's, it's still tanky. But the DPS check is lower when you don't have as many elemental shields to deal with. Because you have more time to deal with your... To deal your damage. And when you have more time to deal the same amount of damage then, you know, it's damage per second, not damage per suck. So that does tend to reduce the DPS requirement. Would I ever as a shave it for my beard? Sure. I could make it a sub goal. Why not? What character from Star Rail would I like to see in Genshin? Ambronia. You use your skill and it resets another character's skill cooldown. Or burst cooldown. That'd be sick.
Tutu.